In this video, we will learn socket programming in Python. A socket allows a program to send and receive data over a network. The network we will be using today is our local network. For example, the connection between you and your router is a local network. So every device that is inside this network will be able to connect to this server that we will create today and this server will be our PC. So a small summary of sockets is that they allow us to send and receive data between a client and a server on a local network. Now before we dive into the code, you need to know a thing or two about the client-server model. Basically, each person connected to the internet has an IP address. The device of that person is wirelessly connected to the router which connects it to the internet. The user can send something over the internet, and thanks to TCP, which transforms data into small packets and sends them over the internet, making sure that each packet arrives to the correct destination. Routers also serve as routes or guides to help the data packets to travel over the internet and to arrive to their destination. So this is a small overview of the client-server model, and what we'll build today is a socket program that allows the client to send and receive data from the server. Okay, now let's go ahead and create our server. So this is a server.py file, and this is where we'll create our server. So to start, we will first of all say import socket. We need to import the socket module by saying import socket. Next, we need to identify the IP of our server. Now the IP of the, our server will be the IP of our machine because we are using our machine as our server. So basically, the IP of our machine will be the IP of our server. So I'll say IP server. And how could we find the IP of our machine? Now you could use IP config on command prompt, but how do, how do we do this in Python? So we could say socket dot get host by name and this function takes an argument so we will say socket dot get host name. Now this function right here returns the device name or the host name which is then passed to this function which eventually returns the IP of your device or the IP of the host name. Now if this notation is actually a bit complicated you could use the following notation. You, so you could say inside quotation or double quotation, you could say local host. Now this is a special host name that eventually returns the IP of your machine. So I guess this is a shorter version and a better version. You could use whatever you want, but I'll go with this one. Next, let's, let us define a port variable, which we will store the port number. And our port number will be 999. Now, a port number is basically like a label that tells the data transferred which service it should arrive to. Now that we have the IP server and the port number, we could create the address of our server. So I could say address and this will be a tuple that contain IP server and contain the port. So you'll know later on why we need it as tuple. Now let's go ahead and create the socket of our server. So server socket, I'll create a variable called server socket. And I'll call socket, the library called socket, and the method called also socket. So this method right here allows us to create a socket. Also, this method takes two arguments. The first argument is the type, type of network. And the network, and by default, the network chosen is IPv4. And also it takes a second argument, which will be the type of connection. Also by default, it takes TCP. So if you don't mention anything right here, IPv4 and TCP will be passed by default. Okay, good. Now that we have a server socket, let us go ahead and bind the socket with the address that we have right here. So I'll say server socket dot bind and I will mention the address and the bind function actually takes a tuple, which that's why we use the address as a tuple that contains the IP of the server as well as the port that we will be using. Now let us go ahead and print a small message that tells us that the server started. So I'll write server started. Now let's go ahead and define how many clients the server can accept. So I could say server socket dot listen and inside mention how many clients this server can accept. So I could say three clients. So this server can maximum listen to three clients. Now I want to define a list of questions that we will display for the user. So the user will be able to ask one of the following questions. So the first question will be what time it is. So our server must be able to provide the user. If the user will ask this question, we must provide the user with the time. Okay, the current time. And the second question is what is today's date? Today's date. So if the user asks this question, we need to provide with today's date. That is why we'll be using two libraries. 
the first library will be the time library and the second library will be the date time library this library allows us to get time or get the time the current time and this one right here allows us to get today's date so today's date okay we will see how we use them later on now because our server is a piece of machine that is always up and running it will, it will be logical to use a while loop with a condition of true so it will loop infinitely now the server must be able to accept the users that are connecting to it so how to how to do this well we could use the server socket and use the the accept function to accept the users that are connecting to our server also let us create two variables connection and another variable called address now what is actually happening right now so this accept function actually returns a socket object that will be stored inside this variable or the connection variable also this accept function also returns the ip address of our client that just connected to our server so again this stores a socket object that allows the server to actually send something to the user and also receive something from the user and this variable right here is simply a variable that stores the ip address of our client that just connected to our server also another feature of this accept method is that it pauses the execution of the program until it detects that a client is actually connected to our server now what we could do right now is print a small message and say user connected and we will mention the ip address of the server by mentioning the address variable which stores the ip address of our client so now let us go ahead and send a small message to the client so basically when the client connects to our server we want to be able to send something to the client so how to do this well remember i told you that we could use this socket object to actually send something to the user as well as receive something from the user so why not use this object so connection dot and why not send something to the user so we could say send and this send function allows us to send something to the user well let me go ahead and type the message as string so i will say hello client hello client ask the following questions and i will mention a new line right here and inside curly brackets i will mention the list of questions that we have so the client will be able to ask one of those two questions but the problem is that a message over a network must be in bytes our message right now is in strings so what to do to convert this message to bytes well we could use the dot encode method on a string and mention the utf8 format what this basically means is that we are using utf8 that will help us encode that string into a sequence of bytes so now that we have our string in bytes it will be sent to the user as byte format now let us go ahead and test this server by running this python file and let's see what will happen so basically we got an error i guess escape sequence oh okay so i have mentioned backslash m it should be backslash n for new line right now let's go ahead and run this python file again and i need to close it and then run it okay so let's go ahead and see what will happen right now okay now there's no errors so server started but there's nothing being executed now that's because the accept function actually pauses the execution of the program and waits until it detects if a client is connected to our server or it's trying to connect to, uh, to our server and now we actually need to create a client to see what will happen next so why not go ahead and right now create another client now what i want you to do is create another instance of vs code so another window of vs code and go to a different directory inside your computer and create a client.py file why i want you to do this because we need to have separate uh, separate files server.py as a separate file and a client.py as a separate file that's because we need to run them separately and you will understand what I, what i mean later on so right now make sure you have a client.py file and let us move on by creating a client so as always import the socket library next we need to use the same metadata we use in our server these are the following metadata that you will be needing so if you remember we actually wrote those inside the client.py file so i just copy paste them right here that's because we need the client to connect to our server but how could the client connect to our server well it should use the address of our server that is why we are putting these metadata right here in this file so let's go ahead and create a client socket by saying client 
socket socket this will be the variable that will store the client socket so right now you should know how to create a socket and remember the socket the method or function takes two arguments the type of network which will be by default ipv4 and the type of connection which will be by default tcp next let's let us connect this client to our server so we could say client socket dot connect and mention inside the address of our server so i'll write here in comments address of server so remember the client is connecting to the address of our server so basically the client is connecting to our server let me write a simple message so i'll say print and i'll simply print a simple message like user or client connected now i am back at my server.py file and let me go ahead and run it now oh it's already running okay let me close it and rerun it again so let's see what will happen right now so our server started and right now the server is actually waiting for someone to connect okay so let's go ahead to my client.py file and run this python file so i run this file okay as you can see client connected let us go to the server side and as you can see we officially recorded the client that is connecting to our server so remember that we run our client.py file earlier as you can see it was detected and we actually print the client this is the ip of the client this is the port and as you can see user connected and so there it is we actually connected a client to our server also make sure to remember that you should always run the server file first before running the client file okay and if you do it vice versa it won't work properly okay good now that we created a client let us go ahead and receive the message that the server is giving to us now how could this client receive a message from the server well let us go ahead and and say client socket and use the receive function to receive a message from the server now this receive function actually takes a argument which will be the message size let us use 1024 bytes now remember that the message that is sent by the server is in byte format and what we need to do here is convert it to a string so how to do this well what we could do is use the dot decode method so i'll say dot decode and use the utf8 format so basically we are just converting byte format to string okay good now let's go ahead and store the message inside a message variable and let's go ahead and print the message so print message let us try this out so i am back at my server.py file running the server of always as first and it is starting let me go to the client and run the client okay good client connected as you can see this is the message of the server so what the server is telling me hello client ask the following questions these are the following questions what time it is and what is today's date so good now we were able to receive a message from the server right now i want to let the client actually input something so i want the client either to input one and one means the client wants to ask the first question and the number two which means that the client is asking the second question so let us go ahead and do this so let me go ahead and create a input variable so i'll say input or user input so user input and it should be an integer and we want to allow the user to input and what i'll say here is choose a question i'll say here one or two for example and the user should be able to well input either one or two but if the user actually inputted a string we will result in an error because you cannot convert a string into a integer so if the user input a for example or the letter a well you cannot convert a to an integer and you will end up with an error that is why we'll use try and accept so first of all we want to be able to try this input or try yes try this input so what we'll do is i'll cut this from here put this inside the try block so if this gives us an error what i'll do is i'll accept this error and i won't do anything for now or let me print invalid input invalid input please input one or two now i want to give the user a chance to re give us an input or give us again an input so what i will do here is i will put all of this block well what did i press okay i want to put all of this block inside a while loop i'll say while true 
and like this i will allow the user to or i'm giving the user a chance to give us a correct input so if the accept block was launched it will print this and it will allow the user again to give us an input but what if it well what if the user gave us a correct input what i want to do here is i want to send to the server my input so what i will do is say client socket dot send and i need to send my input but remember it should be first at string so i'll say str user input i'm converting my input to a string and basically i need to then decode this or excuse me encode to utf8 so i'm using utf8 to convert this message into a byte format and then make sure to break out of this while loop because we don't want to continue to ask the user to give us an input because they gave us a correct input so i am back at my server it's still up and running let me close it and run it again so let's let's see server started back to my client.py file let's go ahead and see what will happen okay so client connected hello client asked the following questions these are the questions let's say i choose the first question okay there's no error that's mean that means that the client file is working correctly okay now that our client is able to receive the message of the server as well as answer the message of the server by providing an input and then sending this input to the server making sure that it is a correct input and handling any errors now let's go to the server side and make sure that this server receives the input of the client so what i will do here is i'll create a simple function called receive user and right now when do we receive the user's input but how do we receive the user input remember i told you that this object right here this connection variable stores a socket object that allows us to send and receive data to the user so what we will do is use this variable to receive something from the user and then send something to the user so first of all we need to receive something from the user so what we will do is i'll say connection dot receive and this receive function takes a message size which will be 1024 not to forget we need to store the message inside a variable called msg or message also remember that we need to decode the message given by the user because it is in byte format so we did this before we'll say decode and mention utf8 okay good now let us use an if statement to evaluate this message so i'll say if msg equal equal to one that means the user is asking the first question which is what time it is so i want to be able to provide the user with what time it is let me print a small message now let us actually really send the time to the user so what i'll say is i'll say connection dot send and you remember how to send something so we use the socket object and the send method now we need to send the time to the user so i'll say something like i'll use an f string and let me okay i'll use an s string i'll say time and I'll put an error right here, like this. And inside curly brackets, I want to, well, get the time. So I'll use the time module, and I'll use the C time function, C time, that will eventually return for me the time. Now remember, we need to also convert this into byte format. So basically, I'll use the encode function and use the UTF-8 to be able to convert my string into bytes. Now I wrote something wrong here. Good, now that the user, if the user gives us the value of one, we will send the user the time. Now let's go ahead and say else if, or elif, msg equal to two. That means the user is requesting the date. As you can see right here, this is the second question. I could print the same thing right here. I'll copy this print statement. Now let us again send something to the user. We will do the same thing that we did before. So connection.send. I'll use a S string, I'll say date, and now I will use the date time module to actually get today's date. So date time, this is the name of the module. I will access from it the date time class, which I will access from this class, the now function. And the now function actually returns the current day, okay? So, well, basically this works. And before we continue, we should encode this, encode our message to bytes. So encode UTF-8, to convert this string into bytes and send this message as byte format maybe the user input the number three and we don't have a third question what we could do right here is i'll say a small print statement this is a message for us 
and then I'll send something for the user. So connection.send, your request is not included in our service. Okay, so again, we need to convert this into bytes. So we'll say encode UTF-8. Okay, good. Now let us go down there and mention the method right here. So I'll say receive user and there it is. Now let's try this program out and let's see what is going on. So as always, run the server first and let's run it. As you can see, server started. Let's go to the client file and run this client. As you can see, client connected, hello client, ask the following question. And in the server side, we could see that we, the user was actually connected. Now let's go to the client side and choose the first question. No errors in the client side. Okay. Okay. Now we got a error right here. It says user request is unknown. That's because our message is in strings and we are basically comparing a string to a number. That's why all of those uh, all of those conditions are evaluating faults. What I will do is I'll convert this to an integer. Now that was a mistake. Let us go ahead and relaunch this server and let us relaunch this server started and let's go to the client.py file. Let's launch this client. As you can see, it launched perfectly and I press or I typed one. That means I'm requesting the first that means I'm asking the first question. Let me go to the server. As you can see, user requested time, successfully sent time for user. Now, as you can see, we are not getting the time here. That's because the user is not actually receiving something from the, the server. So what we do is we could go ahead and receive something from the user, from the server, excuse me. So right now I could say something like print and I could use the F string and I'll say server response response with an arrow and I could now go ahead and receive something from the server. So again, I'll say client socket dot receive. And now we need to mention the size of the message, which is going to be 1024. And not to forget, we need to decode this. So I'll say decode and I'll say UTF eight. And so we are converting byte format to string and we are displaying what the, the server is, is giving us. So let's go to the, the server dot py file. Let me go ahead and close the server, run it again. Let's see what what's going on. And so server started. Let me go to the client side. I will run my client. As you can see, it is asking the following question right here. You know what? Let, let me clear the interface first of all. Okay, right now let's go ahead and run the server first. So I'll say run Python file. So we are we're going to run first of all the server. Let's go ahead to the client and run the client. Run Python file. Let's go ahead and run the client. Okay, so there it is. These are the questions. This is the prompt. I will choose number one. As you can see, server response respond us with a time. And so this is the time. So the server is actually working properly. Let's go to the server. As you can see, user requested time. Successfully sent time for user. Okay, good. Let's keep the server up and running. Let me go ahead back to the client and rerun this client. Okay, this time, let me ask the second question. As you can see, server response with a date, and this is today's date. Let me go to the server and see what happens. And as you can see, user requested today's date, successfully sent today's date for user. Okay, good. Now let me reconnect the client with its, the server, but this time I will mention a different uh, input. So instead I will just write random string. As you can see, the try and accept block worked. And let me do it again. As you can see, it's working. So right now, let me input the number five. As you can see, your request is not included in our servers. So basically the server was able to detect that the user is requesting a service that is, is, that is not available in our server. So as you can see, user request, unknown service, fail. And so this is pretty much it about how you can work with sockets. Now you have a basic understanding of sockets. So make sure to play around with sockets and try to create, for example, multiple users that communicate with each other through the server. And thank you for watching this video. Make sure to click on one of these end screens that will appear right now. And I hope to see you in the next video.